Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we're looking at John Orlando's Cybergen number no. one from CFD Productions from 1996. John Orlando is one of the most amazing underground, uh, prolific uh, cartoonists and now musicians that I know. So I'm very excited to share this with you. Um, it's a lot of fun. Can't wait to get into it. So subscribe to my channel, hit that like button and let's do it. All right, so I should say that my theme song uh, for my channel that prefaced this video was recorded by the Flushing Queens, one of the most amazing bands, Jill and John Orlando from Flushing, New York, I guess. Uh, that must be where they're from if uh, he would name it the Flushing Queens, right? Um, but anyway, he was like a great cartoonist in the 80s, 90s, and beyond um, until he made the switch to musician. Um, I've known him for a long time. I His humor is next level. He is one of my favorite people. He was Rich Buckler's like art assistant back in the day. A lot of people were, I think. But I think some of that sensibility comes through. Um, he, like a lot of his other books that I'm covering, this is kind of a weird one, are like, uh, you know, like uh, indie sort of slice of life, more biographical kind of stuff that... John is such a crazy weirdo. That is totally his wheelhouse. So it is so much fun to kind of see him do this like 90s image inspired comic book because um, it looks very much like 90s image, but it has like John Orlando's like signature all over it. I'm not sure what CFD Productions stands for. Um, and it said this is one of three. I haven't seen any sign of issue two, so this may have been the only one. I mean, self-publishing in the 90s was dicey at best, you know, after the Image Comics implosion. Um, Jim Lee changed the face of comics, influencing artists. Uh, you know, even John Orlando, he has this really cool, like, quirky cartoon style. And clearly he is, like, channeling the, you know, Jim Lee sort of, 90s image comic book. I guess a lot of people did that, you know what I mean? It changed the face of the comic books so adapt or die, right? Um, he would go back to his style, so that's the good news. But this is so fun. Um, let's see. CFD Productions and Visage Studios presents John Orlando's Cybergen, a drama of science, bureaucracy, and megalomania in three parts. I also love that it's Cybergen, like Cyber um, Force and Gen 13, like very, you know what I mean? I think it, it has to be intentional. Like it's almost parody, but not quite because there's an actual real story about mutation and experimentation going on. Um, I do have to say that, you know, obviously uh, color was a huge thing in the Image Comics universe that, you know, for better or worse, uh, some was really great, some was really terrible, but it was kind of shocking and next level and sort of upping the game of comic book coloring. So I low-key do want to see this in color. However, um, as a fan of like artist editions and things like that, I love seeing just black and white art. Um, I love seeing like the line work and the talent that goes into this and behind this. This is like, there's so much action going on. It also has like a 1950s like science fiction vibes for me a little bit, but the action is kind of nonstop. And you know, the use of black and white is great. I mean, the spotting of blacks in the negative space is like pretty next level throughout. Um, I love the action speed lines, not only in the panel, but outside of the border of the panel as well. Nice touch. And that there. I mean, I guess I know John Humor, so, or John Orlando's Humor, so um, I know he makes a lot of, like, um, you know, dick and, and poop jokes, so I'm kind of looking for the phalluses. I think I saw one here <laughs> that I just pointed out, and the finger right there, right? Um, but, I don't know, there's, like, kidnapping, there's... I mean, I have to say, like, this is what I'm saying, like, you can totally tell, like, he was, like, the assistant of, like, a professional Marvel comic books artist because, you know, the storytelling is here, the backgrounds are here, um, the, you know, the the detail is here, the, the level of professionalism is here, you know, the discipline one would think it would take to you know, work as someone's assistant, I guess, is present. Uh, John, Story and Pencils, John Orlando, Inks, John Orlando, and Visage Studios. Uh, letters, Mike Lilly. I found that interesting. Mike is, like, a very accomplished penciler himself, so that was kind of fun to see his name here. I love these 
these characters. They're so, like, it's Ben Grimm times four, the way they talk. And I just, like, it's kind of hilarious throughout. And then chapter two, gloriously written, penciled, and inked and edited by John Orlando, gorgeously lettered by Mike Lilly, and grudgingly assisted with backgrounds by Vernal McDade. Cybergen, the offspring, the mutoids, a man named Poole. Um, oh my gosh, yes. And of course, you know, Image Comics uh, style is going to give you a beautiful double page spread. And I love the action in here. Um, I can't help but remind it a little bit of artists like uh, Carl Allstater and a little touch just the rendering of the lines here, like Jim Valentino. Total dickhead, right? Anyway. Um, this is so much fun. I have, like, a, a, a little stack of John Orlando comic books. I have one more, like, superhero-ish type one, and then a bunch of, like, Slice of Life, and I cannot wait to get to the Slice of Life. Like, when you guys see, like, how utterly different it is, he goes from Jim Lee to Arkham, like, that, and it's kind of, uh, um, what do you call it? Annoyingly, uh, inspirational. Like, what talent, right? And then he goes and makes a band. And, like, my theme song rocks, but you should... There will be a link to their YouTube page where you can hear other songs by the Flesh and Queens because, believe it or not, my theme song is far from their best songs, but definitely top ten. And I really love their music. It's sort of like what well, you heard in this theme song. It's very much that. Um, Zara, I love this character. I mean, what would a 90s-inspired image comic book be without a bad girl present? And you know, nailed it. It's funny because I, 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 it's like this is such a weird balance of, you know, like commercial validity mixed with underground goodness of John Orlando. I love this panel here so much. That is so cool. Like, I, I don't know. I want. I got. I can't wait to talk to John about this because it's just so. It feels so different for him. Like. I'm mostly familiar with, like, the stuff he would post on Facebook as we've been friends for, like, 10 years and stuff. But, like I said, he doesn't really draw that much anymore. Come back to the table, Johnny O. Johnny O, we need your voice. Although we have it with the music, and we'll take it, so that's fine. Cybergen, the greater of two evils. I love this so much. John Orlando, author, illustrator, Mike Lilly, letterer. There was something on this that just, like, was killing me earlier when I read it. And I also would like to point out um, perhaps a little Dale Keown influence. I had I was feeling some pit vibes earlier in the book. And this, this, right? Like, look at this gorgeous, ropey, noodly, thick, luscious veins and the under-highlighting here. This is low-key one of my favorite pages. It is so good. What else do we have going on here? That's very cool. Very Death's Head. You, you've mastered the art of the open hand, John Orlando. I, I can see you just posing for yourself. Um, what else? Uh-oh, trigger warning on the next page if I, if I saw that silhouette correctly. Um, this is cool. I love it. It is so black and juicy and just gorgeous. It is perfection. This creature is disgusting. His mouth is so triggering for me. Like, it's sort of like a predator mouth, but a hundred times more horrifying, right? Reminds me of the movie Teeth, <laughs> um, which I refuse to see. So I thought this was going to be triggering because I thought this was going to be the World Trade Center, but I guess it's not. Is it? No, it's not. Beautiful silhouette, nonetheless. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> this is just like... The best panel ever. Like, it is so great for so many levels. I, uh, blah, blah. <laughs> like, I feel, I see your humor coming through, John. Do not fool yourself. This is so cool. Primen Thorgus. I don't know just the names of the, some of the characters and some of the ridiculousness. It's just, like, so much fun. So then we have a pinup layout by John Orlando with finishes by Rich Buckler Sr. And then there's some by Rick buckler jr um who knew there was a rick buckler jr i guess john knew anyway fun stuff right what a great comic i love that pinup peter or uh, by nacer subashi um who is this here pinup by winston blakely what a great slice like a view of and then the man himself my buddy john orlando you look so intense there and frank millery just the auteur that i know you to be i love it visage studios 
So beautiful. So amazing. J Journey into Madness. Cybergen. Behemoth. Intruder. Grave Watch Inc. This is like a really fun line of comic books. I'm so glad that I have this and I'm able to share it with you today. I urge you to seek out the work of John Orlando. He is so cool. And just like one of my favorite people on the planet. Thanks for the theme song, John. It continues to please me. Anyway, that is it, guys. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button and I will bring you more soon.